So, here's a letter. Greetings. Thank you for taking the time to read my letter. I really appreciate it. My name is Nisin R. Lopez. I'm a 43-year-old Cuban-American artist based in Miami, Florida. I am contacting you in order to denounce a hideous crime that is being perpetrated against me here in the United States of America. Contract stalking and electronic weapon assaults sponsored by corrupt elements in the U.S. government. Yes, I am a targeted citizen. I've been experiencing organized harassment sponsored by the authorities since January of 2011. This thing ruined my life. You might be saying to yourself, what exactly is organized uh, harassment, right? Well, this is not easy to explain, you know. One could say that contract stalking is bullying on steroids, covert harassment, organized group stalking, or community-based mobbing is pretty much a form of political repression, extrajudicial punishment. Organized stalking is a secret program of the U.S. government designed to destroy targeted individuals emotionally and psychologically through dark neurolinguistic programming and negative aversive stimuli. We're talking here about a multi-layered interagency program. Law enforcement is behind this, the intelligence community is behind this, and third-party contractors are behind this, you know. Private security companies, you know, mostly employ ex-military and ex-intelligence agents. As far as the organized community harassment done to me every single time I go out into the general public, the unjust systematic harassment is done by a group of people in an organized fashion, using unethical means in order to torment, preoccupy, agitate, intimidate, and terrorize the isolated victim 24-7 no matter where he goes. I'm talking about acts of provocations, you know, street theater, invasion of space, noise campaigns, mimicking, directed conversations, engineered collisions, orchestrated synchronicities, entrapment, etc. You know, pretty much community-based mobbing based on choice reference patterns. <clears throat> the targeted citizen is exposed to a stressor outside the range of usual human experience. He is terrorized 365 days a year 24-7. He is kept in a state of anxiety and hypervigilance until he finally breaks down after years of indescribable psychological abuse. Most victims of this program end up homeless, in jail, or in psychiatric institutions, you know, isolated, with no support system, broken in spirit. So now, who are the agent provocateurs recruited by the authorities that constantly harass the targeted individual in an organized fashion? Well, they are called surveillance role players. They believe they are patriots and heroes, serving at all costs. They come from all types of social backgrounds. These mindless automatons are brainwashed into believing that the target is a really bad person, a terrorist, a murderer, or a sex offender, like a rapist or a child molester. We're talking here about a professional character assassination campaign, a clandestine civil military operation. The command station for organized talking is the fusion centers. You know, we're talking here about Threat Intelligence Consortium. Overall, contract stalking is a secret, illegal, long-term, unconstitutional surveillance program designed to neutralize outspoken, politically incorrect free thinkers that are designated as enemies of the state even if they are just innocent, harmless, law-abiding citizens that pose no real threat to anyone. Keep in mind 
that the targeted individual is also subjected to directed energy weapons and other forms of psychological torture. I'm talking about mind control neuro weapons, you know, remote neuro influencing technology. The human test subject is implanted with highly advanced neuro nanotechnology that enables brain to computer interface. This secret technology of DARPA flavor enables the handlers to link the target's unique brain signature to their supercomputer. These are some of the things they can do with this technology. This technology enables the handlers to read the target's uh, thoughts verbatim in real time. They can tap into the optical nerve and into the auditory system. They can see what you see and they can hear what you hear. This technology allows the handlers to map out all the target's emotional states, especially negative emotions like sadness, anxiety, fear, anger, etc. They can beam these emotions back into the target anytime. They can even Google your memories. This technology can be used to implant words, phrases, images, and motion pictures into the target's psyche or natural stuff. The idea behind this is to make the target believe that those are his real thoughts when they are not, you know, synthetic telepathy. This technology can be used to control dream cycles and sleep patterns. They can deprive the target of sleep. This technology can be used to control the muscle movement of the target, causing spasms. They can also inflict pain in any part of the body. This technology can be used to sexually manipulate the target. It can make the target feel sexual arousal or it can sort of turn off the target's uh, sexuality altogether. It can also be used to manipulate the hormones of the target, thus lowering and raising estrogen and testosterone levels in women and men respectively. This technology can also be used to eliminate the target with an artificial heart attack that generates no forensic evidence. Pretty amazing stuff, right? <laughs> All the experiences of the human test subject are stored in a supercomputer that predicts behavior based on past choices. I think the ultimate end of this program is to create a digital clone of the target's brain. You know, they basically got control over your thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations, etc. You know, full spectrum dominance. So now, the leader of clandestine operations in the CIA, Elizabeth Kimber. She doesn't know anything about this behavioral modification program. <laughs> the principal deputy director of national intelligence, Susan M. Gordon. She doesn't know this kind of thing is taking place. <laughs> The director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, Robert P. Ashley. He doesn't know this is going on. <laughs> the Assistant Attorney General of the National Security Division, John Charles Demers of the Department of Justice. He doesn't know this is going on. <laughs> The director of the FBI's Terrorist Screening Center, Charles H. Cable. He doesn't know this going on. <laughs> the Undersecretary of Homeland Security for Intelligence and Analysis, David J. Glove. He doesn't know this going on. <laughs> of course they all know this is going on. You know, the puppet masters behind this personality disintegration program, you know, they will do anything in order to justify a multi-billion dollar national security, counter-terrorism, corporate military uh, intelligence 
uh, police state complex, you know, multi-billion or multi-trillion, who knows, you know. Think, for example, about how much money has been invested in projects like the brain research through advancing innovative neurotechnologies, you know. This transhumanism agenda is big business. So, you know, let's go ahead and put this into perspective. Conclusion. On one hand, we got heavy, overwhelming, multi-layered, organized community harassment designed to drive a person crazy. Then, they got a military technology based on DNA resonance that can be used to push a person over the edge, you know? A perfected breakdown tactic on the human will, you know? This is a humanity 2.0 experiment, you know, no question about it. 